But coming up next, something absolutely fascinating. The Shakuhachi. They say there are no child prodigies of Shakuhachi playing. It's immensely difficult to play at all, let alone master. It's an end-blown flute, as against the transverse flute of the Western orchestral tradition, known also as the Zen flute. The instrument requires great breath control and mastery of both body and mind. It arrived in Japan from China sometime in the 8th century and was adopted by Zen Buddhist samurai monks who used it apparently not only as a tool for meditation but also as a very effective weapon. It makes a great club. There are various sizes of shakuhachi depending on the bamboo trunk from which it's cut. Typically it's about 55 centimetres long. The maker uses the base of the bamboo plant where the roots start branching out, so it has a rather knobbly end. There are only five finger holes, with no keys or pads, nor is there any sort of mouthpiece to speak of, simply an angled cut at the blowing end. The instrument tonight's soloist, Riley Lee, will be using tonight was specially made for the work he'll be playing, The Heart of Night, by Ross Edwards. It's a bass version of the shakuhachi, almost a metre long and immensely difficult to play. Bear all that in mind as you listen to Riley Lee perform tonight. He's lived in Australia for many years now, but he was born in Texas in the United States, went to university in Hawaii, and he went to Japan in 1970, really just for a holiday, but that led him to commence the eight years gruelling training that led to him becoming the first non-Japanese to attain the rank of Dai Shihan, or Grand Master of Shakuhachi. Now, the orchestra has been, particularly the strings of the orchestra, have been moved backwards. The, the first violins have been moved to the left, and a small riser has been placed next to the conductor's riser for Riley Lee to, to sit on as he plays the Shakuhachi. The orchestra has retuned and awaiting now the arrival of our conductor and soloist. By the way, for the performance of this work, the lights of the Perth Concert Hall will be dimmed almost into complete darkness to help set the mood for the performance of this piece. <laughs> Riley Lee arrives on stage wearing a traditional Japanese costume, the samu-e, which he described to me earlier as a tuxedo version of the Zen Buddhist monk's working clothes. He takes his place on the platform with conductor Paul Daniel.
that was The Heart of Night for Shakuhachi and Orchestra by Ross Edmonds. Riley Lee was the soloist, and the WA Symphony Orchestra was conducted by Paul Daniel. Riley Lee, bowing to the audience, turns, bows to the orchestra, and walks quietly off stage, bearing that strange bamboo flute for Shakuhachi. The performance given in almost complete darkness, but then at the end, the entire concert hall plunged into complete darkness as the last note died away. Riley Lee returns, standing on the little platform on which he'd performed, now receiving a beautiful bunch of flowers, and once again acknowledging the members of the orchestra. Bringing to an end the first half of a quite unusual concert here at the Perth Concert Hall, and the second programme for the West Australian Symphony Orchestra's Masters Series for 2006. And with me now is the composer of that remarkable work, The Heart of Night, Ross Edwards. Ross, I have to say it's left all of us in a rather changed state, which I would imagine is... That's what it's meant to do, yes. (laughs) That's how it worked. (laughs) Can you talk to us a little bit about your intention? Uh, I wanted to, well, to leave the audience in a state of... uh, calm really and because most music it performs a journey and uh, for the last couple of centuries a pretty dynamic journey in the concert hall I think that there is a place now as there has been in many cultures uh, and Europe before the enlightenment for the kind of music that is actually therapeutic that um, that can uh, put us under and make us look inward. Uh, And that was the intention of this piece. It's related, I suppose, to uh, the whole traditions, many traditions of contemplative music around the world. And of course the instrument, the shakuhachi, comes from that. It's one of the quintessential instruments for uh, inducing a contemplative state of mind. The word night is an important part of, of, of the concept, isn't it? Could you just explain why? It's the night mode of consciousness I was trying to get at, as opposed to the, I suppose, the day mode, which would be um, an active mode. This is a, a quiescent mode where we, uh, 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 we sort of look inward um, and uh, turn off the ev- everyday events. Uh, for a while and just see what happens. It's very mysterious. I wanted th- this, One of the reasons I wrote the piece is I wanted to see what happened, what would happen in the concert hall um, if I turned the lights out, uh, apart from the obvious necessity of reading the, the um, instrumental parts that we had sconces mm. and created uh, a very mysterious atmosphere. And um, I found myself listening to it. I closed my eyes, but you don't have to do that. It's also uh, a spectacle, I think, which um, is very magical and mysterious. Deeply affecting. Yes, it it sort of enhances the music. Does the cross-cultural aspects of of using an instrument and and possibly a style or a genre that that has Asian implications in a a Western setting, is, is that important to you? Yes, it is important because um, uh, I wanted to get away from Europe many years ago. I find myself um, listening to the environment, but also uh, listening to a lot of non-Western music and not deeply researching it, but being aware of its function, which is very different to ours. I listened to a lot of non-Western music. Um, I didn't listen to any 
European music for a long time. And then I realised that, of course, uh, many years, uh, centuries ago, European music was very similar in, in its function to, to uh, non-Western music, many kinds of non-Western music. And I thought it would be uh, appropriate to sort of bring in, at that point, more European music. We're going right back to plain chant, which has the same kind of function, of course, as um, uh, the shakuhachi and, and uh, these kinds of uh, traditions of, of um, music which induce meditation. Can we look just at the technical difficulty of writing for the shakuhachi, which is mm. mind-bogglingly difficult it, 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 as a performance instrument. I, when you have a player like Riley, who's obviously a master of the instrument, a grandmaster, in fact, um, I didn't want to try to be too complex in the way I wrote. That's why I gave him uh, many long phrases which I knew he would colour in all sorts of ways. And um, rather than me try to be too specific in my notation, I left it to him uh, to add the subtleties which exist in the instrument anyway, and far be it from me to know how to write them down. Therefore, there's a certain amount of... Um, uh, uh, freedom in the way I've notated it. All the material is written down, but um, he can play it in certain orders. He can uh, keep coming back to phrases. It's designed to work like that, and it gradually accumulates towards the end. Um, the uh, instrument itself, I, I, I first was aware of it when I was a student um, in England, in the 1970s, I used to go to sleep listening to the shakuhachi. So when I first met Riley, or was actually aware of his presence in Australia, he, got, he came here from Hawaii to uh, do his PhD at Sydney University, and hearing some of the recordings he's made on tall poppies in those days, and many others now, um, and I realised what a, a, a superb musician he was, um, and how... Well, I just wanted to write for him. And um, gradually we built up a relationship where I started to write... Uh, I st back in 1995, I wrote a piece called Rough Song at Sunrise, which was to accompany um, an exhibition of uh, bamboo sculptures by the Sydney sculptor Ross Millick. And um, having written that, Wood Riley sort of suggested we might collaborate some more. And so I added... Uh, in a piece called Tailga Mantras, didgeridoo uh, and percussion. And so we're getting more cross-cultural. <laughs> and then um, I decided I would uh, use it in the dawn piece I wrote for the, um, uh, the beginning of the new millennium, in which you had Riley and uh, various other people sitting on the sails of the Sydney Opera House. And again, adding instruments was a didgeridoo. There was a, a little girl, Eleanor Baroni. Um, there was uh, some percussionists, um, and uh, Matthew Doyle played the didgeridoo. And they were all sort of sitting up there, and we had choirs in the concourse. So the shakuhachi was gradually playing an important, more increasingly important part in my work. And the natural thing to do then was to write for orchestra and, and shakuhachi, which is quite a challenge. Uh, because it has to be discreetly amplified. To, to do it too much would destroy it. It would, wouldn't work, I don't think. But um, I, I wrote for a small orchestra. I had to be sure that the, the shakuhachi would come through. And so uh, that was the challenge in, in scoring this piece, lightly and yet not too insubstantially. Finally, could I ask you about, about the future and what you might be engaged in working upon at the moment? I've just finished a string quartet for Music of Viva that will be premiered next, ooh, uh, no, I think it's November 2007. I work well ahead. Yeah. Uh, I'm working on a piano trio, a, a shortish piece for piano trio at the moment. Then I go straight into a clarinet concerto, which will be later this year. And that's for the Mel Melbourne Symphony, and the soloist will be David Thomas, their principal clarinetist. Ross Edwards, thank you very much for talking to us. Oh, it's a great pleasure.